hi guys welcome and uh, today in this tutorial we are going to see the application timers so application timers are basically the low power timers and uh, they uh, they use the low frequency clock they are called low power timers we can use these application timers to virtually create uh, more software timers and uh, we don't need the hardware timers this time so let's create a new project so go into my computer then in the c directory here we have uh, an rf sdk and go into the examples folder and uh, this time we will go in the peripheral and uh, we will copy the template project from here right click copy and uh, paste it in the my projects and let's name it as application timers uh, open this project Go into the PCA10040 because we are using NRF52832. Go into the blank SES folder and open the EM project file. So here we can see we have this we have this template project and we need to delete some of the stuff from here. So click on this and delete these extra files because we don't need them. This template project basically contains uh, mo most of the files and drivers so you can start uh, coding here and uh, you won't need to include most of the files. Okay I think so we are done with this. So let's see if our uh, application timers are enabled or not. First of all we have to enable the application timers so right click here on the SDK config and go into the CMC's configuration wizard. Here you can see the libraries and in the libraries just look here app timer enabled and uh, see if it's uh, checked. If it's checked it means the application timer is enabled we don't need to change anything so just close it. So right now our application timers are enabled and uh, right now we have to program them. Let's include some of the files that we are going to need. Uh, make sure you have included this timer app timer dot h and the nrf drive clock dot h file let's first compile it and see if uh, everything is good to go because there are so many of the, so many files so it's taking a little time okay the code is compiled and uh, i think so everything is here and we don't need to include any other file we are going to use this uh, timer to blink an led so let's define an LED. So the LED 1 is connected with the pin 17 and uh, now we need to create the application timer handler. So to do that we need to use this function which is app timer def. So basically it defines the timer handle so for the global handles it's common to use m underscore and then the variable name now i'm just going to give it uh, simply app timer id and uh, there is one more function which will help us in cal calculating the number of ticks to millisecond and uh, we can just define that so for example let me just briefly tell you that the timer we are using is low power timer and it uses 32.768 kilohertz frequency and uh, uh, right now let's see how it's configured so let's go into the CMC's configuration wizard and if we go into the libraries and uh, here is the app timer if we open it and we can see here the current frequency is uh, 16384 so it's uh, divided by 2 and this clock uh, is generated and uh, we have the intra priority as 6 so keep this in mind that our intra priority is 6 right now okay so control plus s to save and uh, now we have the application timer id and uh, uh, we we need to define the ticks so let's say it's led interval and uh, the function to generate the number of milliseconds against the ticks value is this app timer ticks and here you give the milliseconds Let, let's say I want to generate a delay of 100 milliseconds 
So for 100 milliseconds, it's going to calculate the ticks, number of ticks, and it's just going to pass this value to LED interval constant. So our constant has this 100 milliseconds tick value. Okay, so we will pass it later on to the timer. The next thing to do is we need to initialize the uh, low uh, frequency clock. To initialize that, we will use this function. And let's say, let's name it as lfclk config. And here we have to initialize the clock. If you are using the software device, you don't need to initialize the clock because the software device automatically initializes the clock. So right now, in a single line, I'm just uh, creating this variable error code and directly using the function. This clock initialization is uh, really important and uh, if you forget to initialize the clock, the timer is not going to work. And uh, here, we are telling that once the clock ticks, uh, it does not uh, generate any sort of interrupt. So we requested the clock just uh, we requested the clock to just tick, and we will use our application timer, and uh, our application timer is going to generate an event, and we can you we will use that event with an interrupt handler. So let's initialize the timer. Let's create a simple interrupt handler. Uh, the application timer interrupt handler and this would be our timer handler okay uh, we have created the handler now it's time to create our timer so we need to initialize that so let's uh, name it this way and we will call it in the main function let me zoom in a little okay so first of all we need to create the return code so basically this is the error code variable and now we need to initialize the timer so the function is app timer init initialize so the app timer in it is a function and then we will check for the error so app error check and here we will just put our error code okay the timer is initialized make sure you just initialize uh, the application timer only once in your code and uh, this uh, application timer is also used in the both support package so in the next uh, tutorial we will see that as well so for now if you are not if you are not using any soft device then uh, you need to initialize the clock if you are using the soft device then you don't need to initialize the clock because the soft device will automatically initialize it and uh, right now we can create multiple timers so every time you create a timer you can just initially put this new timer in the ti timer init function so to create a new timer we use a simple function app timer create and here we need to pass the handle so the handle for this is m app timer id so we have to if you are using multiple timers multiple application timers in the same code just to uh, create more handles for that okay the next thing is uh, this application timer works in two modes one is the repeated mode and the other is single shot mode in the single shot mode once you turn on the timer it turns on and it uh, ticks up to the required uh, counting value and then it, it stops and uh, the repeated mode is whenever the counter finishes up to the counting value uh, the timer is automatically reset and uh, the interrupt is generated and we can handle that interrupt in the app timer handler we can use the one shot mode in some cases and uh, in some cases uh, we can use the repeated timer mode so here let's use the repeated timer so to do that we will use a simple constant app timer and repeat it so now our timer is in repeated mode and uh, the last thing is we need to pass it the handler function so this is our function and we just pass it 
so it's really easy and simple as compared to the hardware timers and uh, it's very useful we can use the same timer for multiple purposes and uh, it's best for low power and for buttons etc later on we will see how we can use it with the buttons and now uh, what i need to do is i just need to start the timer uh, before i do that let's initialize this pin so we can work with it and here i'm going to mention the pin led okay the pin is initialized uh, the next thing is I'm just going to call this clock configuration once this uh, clock is configured now we need to initialize the timer so I'm just going to call the timer init function and uh, now everything is set uh, now I need to do something in the handlers so I want to toggle the LED so let's write that code so I know GPIO pin toggle and here our pin is LED pin 1 okay so uh, whenever this uh, application timer ticks after 100 millisecond it's going to generate an interrupt and the interrupt will be handled in this and in industrial interrupt I'm just going to toggle the LED you can do anything else in this timer and uh, we have two modes for the timer one is the app repeated mode and the other one is the single shot mode in single shot mode the application timer stops uh, after going to the specific counting value and uh, we have to start it again so they both are usable in uh, specific uh, work scenarios so right now i have initialized the timer and everything so i need to start the timer now i need a variable to start this timer the function for this is app timer start so here first of all we have to give it the app timer id so here for in my case i'm just giving it app timer id and this id here it's this id and the next thing is we need to pass it the tick value so here as we as you can see i have uh, already calculated the tick value for 100 milliseconds and uh, i have saved it in this constant so i'm just going to call this constant led interval i'm just going to put that constant here led interval and the last thing and we don't need to pass any pointer so i'm just going to put null here and it's done so right now what's happening is uh, first of all the led uh, pin is going to be initialized and then our clock is uh, going to get configured and our timer is going to be initialized and then our timer is started so once the timer is started it's going to generate the interrupts in every interrupt it's just going to call this handler and this handler is just going to toggle the led so let's just build this code and it's built okay once the code is built just click on the target click on the cl uh, connect j link and uh, click on the raise all and then click on download and once uh, it's downloaded here you can see uh, the led is blinking uh, after every 100 milliseconds here you can see we have used the application timer also it's very useful the application timers are always useful in the low power mode because uh, in low power mode application timer is always running because the low our low frequency clock is always running and uh, the high frequency clock is always turned off in low power modes so it's very useful and you can create multiple application timers i hope so you have learned something new today thank you very much for watching and uh, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button if you like this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video